Hi there. Think of the last time you decided to trust a brand. Was it because of their snazzy logo or a catchy slogan or how they promoted their goods or services to you? Unlikely. It was because they proven themselves credible to you. Credibility is not just about being known without the context. It's being known for something reliable, something, well, credible. Having the authority to speak about the area of expertise in ways that make people want to listen, that make people want to believe in you, that make people inspired by your words, by your examples, by your being, by your reliable credible being. Connecting this with thought leadership and branding yourself as an expert is much easier to comprehend, but you can apply this same thought also to employer branding. And that is what the Magnetic Employer Branding Method can help you with. It gives you a plan for how to turn your organization in this credible and trusted employer being with authority. Welcome back to another episode on building the Modern Employer Brand Podcast with me, Susanna Randanen. Today we're unlocking the, well, I would say a powerful triad. So we have credibility, we've got influence, and we've got authority, and why they are non-negotiable in the art of branding. I want you to grab your notes because this is where your brand's true story begins. And it doesn't matter whether you are building an employer brand, whether you are building your own brand as an expert professional, or whether you are building your brand as a small business owner. It all applies. And if you're new to this podcast, my name is Susanna Randanet, and I am, I would say, the top employee branding expert and influencer, at least in Europe, if not in the whole world. And I also own the uh, top 10 employee branding agency, European employee branding agency, Emine, here in Finland. And this podcast is for those who want to learn how to use branding, marketing and communications for business success as an employer or as a seasoned professional, a small business owner in the era of HR town acquisition, career coaching, or employer branding. So let's get started with this week's episode. Are you ready? So credibility and influence and authority, those are power words in branding. And these apply to, as said, to employer branding, to thought leadership, branding yourself as an expert professional, whether you're working uh, for your employer or whether you are a freelancer or a small business owner yourself. It's about the expertise that you have and the value that you can give to other people in your target audience. And here is the clue. Branding as an expert professional or an expert employer, that requires a commitment to your area of expertise because it needs to become your hallmark of credibility. Now think of your brand, your employer brand or your personal brand uh, as the uh, professional. What is your hallmark? Have you ever thought about that? My hallmark is modern employer branding. For an employer, this could be outstanding candidate experiences that contribute to a hugely trusted and attractive employer reputation. Or this could be your internal commitment to learning and growing your people's expertise as top-notch professionals in your industry. As an expert professional, this is a specific angle in your area of expertise, also known as the niche. And if you want to build your thought leadership, this combination of expertise and your personality, that's what makes people want to trust in your thoughts. So let's dig more deeply into these three areas behind a brand. 
So number one is, of course, credibility. And this is the foundation of trust. Now, credibility in branding, it's kind of like a secret agreement between you and your target audience that you will constantly deliver what you promise. If you would to pick credibility apart, you'll find the ability and the willingness to deliver what you promise. Obviously, ability ties in very closely with your expertise, your actual knowledge, and your abilities to implement and execute your knowledge. And then that, that like you kind of know what you talk about. And even if your audience challenges your knowledge, you won't budge. Um, this happens to me quite regularly. It used to happen to me much more when my audience was much smaller and my thoughts were still fairly new to them. But um, these days, my audience is quite vast and I've been talking about the, the modern embryo branding edge for so many years that um, many people are already, they already know about it. They have already learned about it through my courses or working with our agency and they trust in my words. But it wasn't a long time ago. It was actually quite recently when I was uh, speaking at a seminar to an audience that I don't normally associate with that much. We don't really have customers from that uh, target or that industry that much. And uh, there was one person in the audience who was challenging what I was saying. But I stand by my thoughts and I stand by, I stood by my my uh, speech and I didn't budge, not because I wanted to behave like a stubborn person and not be flexible to other people's opinions. I'm very open to other people's opinions. They don't have to agree with me. You don't have to agree with me. Uh, it's just that my expertise has over 20 years behind of learning, of reading, of studying, working, executing in very different kinds of scenarios with very different kinds of people. It's backed by science. So I'm quite confident not budging in and standing behind my expertise. And that's what it means to be credible. You don't have to budge because your expertise is that solid and that strengthens your uh, credibility. Now, willingness that connects with credibility to, uh, through trustworthiness so that it means that you are actually willing to deliver uh, your brand promises. You make it happen even when it doesn't feel comfortable, even when you're unsure or when you're finding it difficult to get other people uh, to commit or engage with it. One of the reasons I don't recommend putting that much emphasis on employee value propositions, especially in a larger organizations, is, is because you are so less likely to deliver your value propositions simply because you start making compromises in hiring and promoting the larger you grow as an organization. And this, this will lead into an inability to commit to your promises, especially employee value propositions, which are promises to your employees and job seekers. And then this leads to EVPs being formulated on a highly general level uh, so that you avoid actually promising anything valuable and worthy to your target audience. And then this leads to a question, why bother coming up with an EVP when at the end it's worth zero to the organization and its employees. Your target audience, whether it's your existing employees, job seekers, prospects, customers, stakeholders, or any other people that you want to connect with, they expect to be able to count on your brand promise that you deliver it and that regardless of the occasion when they come in contact with your brand, they will experience that promise in the same way. So that brings the reliability into your brand. Also, that brings consistency into your brand. And uh, as you belong to my tribe and are likely to uh, 
be a regular person in my audience in the sense that you're actually consuming my content and learning from me and with me, you know that consistency is key to success. So let me repeat this to you. Your audience must consistently receive the brand promise, regardless of time or the place. Every time they come in contact with your brand, whether it's your employer brand or your expertise brand or your thought leadership brand, they experience what they have heard other people talking about you and what they have experienced in the past with your brand. This is the only way to achieve a brand, and that's what makes employer branding difficult, but not impossible. Because when we're talking about an employer brand, it's kind of like um, you have so many stakeholders contributing towards that experience, and consistency is hard to keep. But it's not impossible, especially if you have a solid and proven system to help you build that unique brand position. And for that, obviously, I'm talking about the magnetic employer branding method. Number two ingredient, that's influence. And the role of influence is to power and shape perceptions. So uh, when we move from the foundation, which is credibility, we're talking about influence. And this is your superpower, shaping your target audience's perceptions or be Influence is your superpower shaping your target audience's uh, perceptions of you. And again, this applies to both employer branding, thought leadership, expertise, and branding yourself as an expert, which is also known as personal branding. But I try to avoid that term as much as I can because I know that in my audience, people uh, may not necessarily feel comfortable with personal branding. And I want to kind of bring out how I build my personal brand as a very introverted, subject knowledge person. I like to talk about expertise, branding yourself as an expert, expert branding. So influence is your brand's ability to sway opinions, uh, shape decisions. You can learn to influence others. And I have spoken about this multiple times over the years because learning to influence is learning to persuade a fundamental life skill most people unfortunately never take time to learn. But I trust that you will. So it's not about how many people follow you on social media or how many people your posts reach. It's about the impact. How do you impact others to move forward, to move their beliefs, shape their opinions and brand loyalties in new directions because of your influence? There is a science behind this. It's called the psychology of persuasion with almost 100 years, I think maybe 75 years by now. So let's say 100 years of research to pack it up. And you'll remember it from the science of getting people to say yes to you. So the easier way to remember this is as the science of getting people to say yes to you. So when you take time to learn how to influence others, how to persuade others and apply this nearly 100 years old science, you will be more successful in your life and career simply because the science will help you get people to say yes to you as an employer, as a recruiter, as a career coach, as a talent acquisition professional when you try to sell them something, sell them an idea, sell them a job opportunity, sell them your company as the place to work, sell them your services, whatever you try to sell them. So I want to talk about the power of a ripple effect when we are creating influence. Ripple effect, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the phrase, uh, this is the effect in a situation where one thing causes a series of other things to happen, like a small action from you as a thought leader, employer, nearest manager, talent acquisition professional, a career coach, completely changed someone's future life. Something you said, something you did, you may not even have noticed or recognized the power, the influence you had on them but it changed someone's future life. So this very innocent and small action from your side 
created a ripple effect through the impact when you empower that person to change something in their ways and then they impacted a lot of other people as a result. So how can you create a ripple effect as an employee brander, a brand expert or a thought leader or as an expert in any area? Let me give you an example. So during your recruitment, a simple gesture, nice gesture received by a declined job seeker changed their view on recruiting. One day, they became a hiring manager and started to follow your example, making the same gesture over and over and over again, creating that same impact on many other people who then changed the way that they hire and treat candidates. These ripple effects are created unconsciously because you just have it in you or you can decide that from now on, you will deliver a good deed, something valuable in a specific situation, and then you just repeat that forever. The third ingredient is authority, and this is you commanding respect in your domain. I know that that sounds kind of sneaky because I don't like anyone commanding anything from anybody, but let's say that you earn it. Let's, let's say it that way. You are earning respect in your domain. So let's imagine that your brand is a pyramid. At the top of your brand pyramid, there is authority. And this is your like a ground jewel. The reason why this is at the top and literally a ground jewel is because it is not given, it's earned. You have to work to deserve it, to earn it. You earn this ground jewel of authority when your brand transcends beyond being an option. So in employer branding, we know that these are the top five companies. This is the top of my list of companies. When your brand transcends beyond being one of those options to being the option, that is when you have authority. When in the language of employer branding, you are no longer just one attractive employer, not even a top 10 most attractive employers, you are at the top of mind, you are the number one, the number one choice for your target audience internally and externally. They don't have any better options. Any other option they rather choose than your brand. They want you as an employer or someone to work with and they are determined to make it happen. Authority means when the industry looks for guidance, they look at you. They don't just hire people, they set standards for how to hire people or how to be number one choice in their industry. They don't just sell services or products, they pave the way to what those services and products need to be. To build authority, you need not just to know your stuff, you need to lead the conversation about your stuff. And remember, with authority, comes responsibility to innovate and inspire. I want to end this week's episode on this very conclusive note. Credibility, influence, and authority. They're like roots, trunk, and branches of a mighty oak in the forest of branding, each supporting the other, and together they weather the storm's of market changing, audience changing, trends, and challenging times. Think of your employer brand or your expert brand. Reflect on your brand's journey through this triad of credibility, influence, and authority. Where do you stand as a brand? What are your roots in keeping your brand grounded through life? And more importantly, Where will your brand grow from here? That's so food for thought. Alrighty, that's all for this week, my friends. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, share this episode with your HR and enable your branding colleagues. Now, I have some news for you. We are now, this is now um, November 2023. We are planning to launch for the first time in the history of employee branding agency, Emine, an online course program for people who want to become certified as 
Magnetic Employee Brand Managers. And right now, we have a survey open. This is fairly short. It's not really long. It's mostly just stick in the box, give your opinion. It takes a couple of minutes of your time to answer to. So if you vision employee branding as your career, where you want to become a top-notch expert professional, this is it. Start by responding to that survey. You can find the survey link as long as we have the survey open. I have pinned it on my Instagram profile. I will put it on the show notes uh, page for this episode. That's episode 158. So you go to modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast 158 and you'll find a banner picture with the link. You can't miss it. So if you want to be part of creating this remarkable learning opportunity where you can become certified as a Magnetic Employer Branding Manager, this is where you can start. When we are launching, we will be launching with the pilot course, and that will be sold cheaper than what the proper course will then be sold at. So I will be inviting people first from the survey respondents group to this pilot. The, the number of the students that I'm going to take into the pilot course will be limited, maybe to 10 people, not sure yet, but let's say 10. So not everyone will be able to get in. And I will offer this opportunity first to those who respond to this survey. And then after a while to everyone. So if you want to be a certified magnetic employer brand manager, start with the survey. Find the link, show notes page, my Instagram at Randan and Susanna. As long as the survey is open, it's going to be pinned there. Look at Eminaland Instagram. It's pinned there as well. The survey is in English. The course will be in English and we'll be posting about this on socials as well. That's all for this week, my friends. So as I said, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to leave a review. Don't forget to share this episode and about the survey for the uh, becoming a certified magnetic employer branding manager with your HR and employer branding colleagues. Stay tuned for more insightful episodes on mastering branding, marketing communications, internal acquisition, employer branding, career development, and even as a solopreneur HR professional, getting more sales, building your solopreneur brand. My name is Susanna Rantanen. Until next week, moi moi.